next. What would you, if someone stopped you on the street and said, Bill, that was so wonderful, what's, well, I want more, I want, I need to, I want to sink my teeth into this, whatever this is, more. Well, how would you answer them? Well, the, I, I think, I think it is really important for the humans, in, the, the general humans, to become more and more inner self-managed. First step is that is to really learning and appreciating medita meditation so you can reduce the noise level inside. Second thing when that's accomplished is to really start to play with your own internal energies. And that gets into practices like Qigong. And that then you now have a quiet inside, you now have ways to enhance your energy. Now what you need are biofeedback devices. So you can build your inner capacity. The, our work shows that all humans have their acupuncture meridian chakra system at this higher gauge symmetry state <coughs> that we produce with our devices. And what that means <coughs> is that your intentions modulate or entangle with this energy flowing in that system. And that's at a higher free energy state, a thermodynamic free energy state than our normal reality, where most of our organs are. And so from this higher free energy state, that is able to drive all processes in our body and outside of our body. So that actors, performers of all kinds, people who really accomplish things in the world, they unconsciously use that system and they build that system. So now we need tools for the general public to build that system. And so those tools, uh, which we're working towards with our, our work, will allow them to go from a normal individual to an adept and then to a master and ultimately to an avatar. And all of us, I think, will ultimately take that path. So <clears throat> it, is, it is time to get about the business of really becoming. And uh, that's what I think is the next step. I mean. What the bleep has opened a door, it's, it's caught the public's imagination, the general public. They want to do more, they want to be, war, be more, they want to know how. Uh, we now have device, which we're, patent hasn't been released yet, but allows us to measure the energy level of a conditioned space above our normal background reality, the U1 state. So we can have a quantitative measurement of that. So we can build an instrument that will do that. It'll be like a voltmeter, but it'll be, we call it size of H plus meter. But <clears throat> it would allow us to do that in rooms, and then ultimately if we shrink that down in size to be able to do it around the human body, we will be able to see what the level of chi flow is mm -hmm. in and out of the body. And that then can become a device that the individual can use as a biofeedback device to build their inner strength in these capacities, just as a physical gym um, is being used today for people to buff themselves. You don't want to call it a vibe meter? <laughs> Vibometer? I don't know what to call it, uh, really. The, uh, as a scientist, I've got to be careful not to be too flip about it, mm. um, because I would ultimately like to reach that community. Mm -hmm. um, but. But maybe it has to be called a vibe meter because the intermediate step to really awaken society is probably the transformation of the general public. Actually, now that I think of it, I think vibometer would be better. Because if you say vibe meter, it's a little too, did, did, but yeah. vibe, vibe, you know, yes. That's not, that's um, my, from the world of marketing, that's my, that's right. my input to the scientific world. <laughs> I, will, I will meditate on that. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> It's so interesting. So you have a device, the vibometer, we'll call it, yes, just, okay. for, just for fun, um, that can measure the condition space, the condition. Yes. What could you do? What is that condition space in, in very practical terms? So the public you're talking about, one to reach, understands. Well, in, in, in practical terms, the way I'm presently describing it is that the normal reality deals with the atom molecule level uh, of physical reality. The, with our conditioned, our space, our device that conditions a space, what it does, it allows the connectivity 
between the atom molecule level of reality and the vacuum level of reality to increase. In the normal reality, it, the, con the connectivity is very, very small. In the theory, there has to be some in order for electromagnetism exists of any form. But it, in order to detect it, one has to do very careful experiments and deep down in the statistics you've got to get to do that. But with this device, which is consciousness embedded into a device, that lifts, that consciousness seems to lift the symmetry state and in practical terms it means that the connectivity between the atom molecule level and the vacuum level increases. It's as if they're parallel universes, all right? And you can only measure in one universe. So in the normal reality, it's as if this is unconnected because you can't get a signature with your instruments. But with consciousness, which lifts the gauge symmetry state, which is also a higher thermodynamic free energy state, then it increases this coupling and we begin to access the physics of the vacuum which appears to be very much related to magnetic monopoles as well as a whole variety of other things. And accessing that new physics allows intention to bring forth effects you wouldn't imagine. Now, um, the zero point energy field that you're talking about, could you just very briefly describe what, you, you talked about that last night. Um, yeah, it's, it's, not a, it's not a, is it a zero point energy field? Well, first of all, Physics de defined zero point energy a long time ago. That's when you're at absolute zero of temperature. There is still a vibrational state in the atom molecule level of reality. And because there are, there are these vibratory states, then as, as electrons move one state to another, they'll emit photons. So the zero point energy is very much related to a spectrum of photons. The energy in that state, the, the photon energy, is smaller than the atom energy. And the atom energy is trivial in magnitude compared to the vacuum level energy I'm talking about. So the zero point energy in the zero point field, people talk a lot about. Uh, and they're important, but in terms of the magnitude of the energies involved, they're quite insignificant compared to the energies that we will discover in the vacuum the vacuum level of reality and the deeper levels of, of that. So the, the one has to begin, one, one cannot use just a single blanket word of saying the zero point, as, as many, many people are doing. It's convenient, but it's, it, ultimately it gets in the, in the way of, exp, of understanding these things deeply. It becomes a pop mm -hmm. kind of thing to, to say, and so I make, in my new book um, and in others. Um, I make a real distinction between these two. I don't mean to knock zero point energy. It's, it's going to turn out to be important in many ways. Um, but people have a real misconception. They think that that's everything, you know, but it's not. So then there's the, the, the vacuum yes. energy. Right, which now, is huge. What, um, you, you did an analogy last night yes. about the, could, could you go, because okay. that's so much, th right. you know, one thing, let me just tell you, we're, yeah. we're, we're going to do this rabbit hole version of the, the okay. movie, yeah. and as we do the rabbit hole version, <clears throat> we talk about a concept, we're just going to basically go down to smaller and smaller, more right. detailed, <clears throat> and let people burrow in, yeah. and of course the vacuum field is such a wonderful way of just describing that right. plunge into another reality. So it if is. You could, well, certainly in, in my modeling, as you go from normal physical reality, and if you're going to shrink, you're going to go then to the next level, which will be the, va the physical vacuum level of reality. And if you keep shrinking more, you'll go to the emotion domain level of reality. And you shrink more, you'll go to the mind domain level of reality. And you shrink more, you'll go to the spirit domain level of reality. So they're all in this metaphorical picture you're describing of the rabbit hole. And so the one thing that could be said for, we'll, we'll come back now to the atom molecule level where we have quantum mechanics on the one hand and we have relativity theory on the other hand. And for those two to be internally self-consistent, and a sidebar is that science doesn't give you truth. All it can determine is internal self-consistency. 
Okay, that, that's all science can do. And for quantum mechanics and relativity theory to be internally self-consistent, the two of them, then the vacuum, the physical vacuum, is predicted to have a latent energy of 10 to the 94 grams per cubic centimeter. Now, in practical terms, how do we grapple with that? All right, we can take, we can take a comparison of two things. We can take the volume of the known universe, that is like a sphere with a 15 million billion light year radius, and we can multiply it by the average mass density, which astronomers can give us a number for, and so we have, we have the right hand number. On the other hand, we can take a simp just a single hydrogen atom, which is mostly empty space, and say, okay, that's, that's Let's look at that amount of vacuum, and we'll multiply it by this 10 to the 94 grams per cubic centimeter, and we get a number. And that number is a trillion times this number. Now, the assumption in making this sum, the calculation, is you, you have to assume, or we assume, that the universe is fairly flat, okay? The curvature is, is very, very small. And that's what astron astronomers tell us is the case. But it's not perfectly correct. So this isn't an absolutely accurate comparison, but it's a good comparison because it realizes that just that little bit of vacuum outweighs all the mass and all the planets and all the stars, and each of those grams of energy are e equals mc squared. So when you begin to really grasp this, you begin to grasp the enormity of the energy that would be involved in going down this rabbit hole. What is available for us to use in the future, to take us to the stars, etc.? The issue is we are perturbing this with consciousness. We are able to, with directed consciousness and intention, we are changing things at the vacuum level, which then allow us to access a new level of physics. So we can do that at that level, not so much at the atom molecule level. That's a secondary effect. So, so you, we're already doing it, in essence. We're already getting into the rabbit hole by using intention. It, as you go down, you're going to successively higher gauge symmetry states. And as you do, the thermodynamic free energy per unit volume goes up and up and up and up <clears throat> until you get to the place of what caused the original Big Bang. So it seems like if there's that much energy in that small space everywhere, it's, it, I mean, is it almost like, um, <clears throat> we're sitting on on top of a huge wave, or or it's more like there seems, I mean, why why doesn't the whole universe just explode then? Well, it's it's potential energy. Okay, it's not. It, <clears throat> it has to be unlocked. It's there. Okay, it's just just as if you have, mm, if you have an atom. Okay, the, the fundamental particles are in a combined state, and what their interaction and combining into a stable mode and emergent property, it is a potential well. I mean, the, the atom resides at the bottom of a potential well, otherwise it would explode apart. Well, it's the same sort of thing as you go down here, and if you take it as a metaphor that there is a kind of substance, that is, you can think, if you like, you can think of a cosmic atom, and the simplest part is what we know about the electrical aspect of that atom. The next part would be the interaction with the magnetic monopole aspect. And then the next part would be the aspects that relate to the motion domain, and then the mind domain. And so you, you build a more and more complex interacting thing, which is, which is doing a divine dance. And so the stored energy is in this unit, all right? So, I mean, in essence, that's what you would have to unlock if you want to release and use that energy. Well, if you have your <clears throat> vi vibometer, and that can measure uh, condition space, yes. is the next step to build a device that actually directly modifies that condition space? In other words, first they had thermometers, and then people figured if you light a fire, you raise the, the uh, <clears throat> temperature, which of course the thermometer. Right. So <clears throat> in your plans, do you see a, uh, um, the equivalent of something where you can, a device is built that you can change your symmetry states? Um, the first level for us is to build a standalone kind of device. At the moment, we have to take three streams of data 
and we have to work with the computer to convert them to the theoretical construct we've developed for this particular potential, which is called the magneto-electrochemical potential energy. And it's just an expansion of conventional thermodynamics. Um, and having that standalone, it'll be like a voltmeter in essence. Then, then anyone could just, you know, plug it into the wall uh, or whatever, and it would register, it'd continuously register what's going on in the room. And that will be the first step. And the, the second step will be you can use our work seems to suggest that you can enhance the capabilities of every bit of technology that we have in the world today by having that technology run in a conditioned space. Okay, because now you're accessing another level of physics. And, and that can augment. I mean, the intentions, just as we can change pH up or down by one full pH unit, and in living system, you go plus or minus a half a pH unit in either direction, you're dead on both ends. So these are very big effects. Uh, so, for example, in terms of, of healing, one of the things that we ultimately expect to do is to be able to broadcast this so that we create an environment where people are 500 or 1,000 miles away or 10,000 miles away, wherein they can use their intention to enhance their health. So, it's, so you can begin to see how you can influence various technologies. In a, let's say in a, a chemical plant or pharmaceutical plant, you, they want to make a particular product, and the product has isomers. That is, there are other things that are created at the same time, and the yield of the one they want is very low. Well, one uses intention to enhance the yield of the one they want and diminish the yields of the others that occur, so it's much easier to extract the one they want. A lot of savings. Uh, you can consider it in terms of, you know, in, in artificial intelligence. That has not been a big success because it doesn't have intelligence beyond what people put in the software. This stuff we're doing seems to have an innate intelligence in the sense that it, it not only lifts the gauge symmetry state of the space, but it tunes it to a specific intention. That, that requires intelligence. It just does that. It doesn't do all these other things. The ones that we, the devices we create for affecting fruit fly larvae, their ATP to ADP ratio, or uh, liver enzyme, or water, they're all different. One doesn't do the job of the other. So that's very interesting. And the, the really key interesting thing is, is that when these processes are used and the gauge symmetry state of the space is raised, the thermodynamic free energy per unit volume of that state is raised. So for the very first time in human history, we see a process going on very different than the normal one, which is increase of entropy and degradation of potential. We see the reverse we see increase of potential, which probably means reduction of entropy. 